Welcome to episode 76 of the Ask Weldon Show. Today I talk about finding new motivation, correcting teammates, and dealing with losing streaks. Let's get into the show. So, um, I still have my fans here with me. Hello. They're still here. They haven't gone anywhere. Uh, I still don't have a bookshelf to put them behind me. And I'm still streaming this live on Facebook Live, so make sure you check out the behind the scenes if you want. You can join also and ask questions there. Um, so yeah, make sure you follow me on Facebook in order to get notifications of when I go live. Wix asks, how do you find new motivation? Uh, so this is in reference to like playing seriously for a season and then um, maybe losing motivation and then gaining motivation. How do you find it again? How do you reboot it? Ooh. Okay, so this is a really good question because it cuts to the heart of what motivation is. And the first thing to understand is that it's, it's a very complicated construct, okay? Motivation is not a simple drive emotion. It's a construct of many different things in your life, from your competence to how connected you feel to the task um, to how, uh, how empowered and like agents, agent you feel in terms of your own destiny in this. So like if you're like chipping away at diamonds for a, you know, a slaver versus like digging for diamonds that are yours, like that's a different agency there. So, um, same action, different motivations, right? So there's a construct mechanically in terms of your psychology, but then it's also a biological construct in terms of your physiology. So like, what is your sleep level? What is your emotional state in the background? What's your mood? Uh, what is your level of, of capability in terms of like focusing on the task that you're doing and driving away everything else? And what is your current um, neurotransmitter level and, and emotional current in terms of like your, your cadence up and down, up and down? Like how, how recently were you totally all in or totally all out? So all of these things come together to create your, your motivational environment and your motivation drives learning, drives focus, drives pretty much everything, which is why you see um, what I'm so happy about on CLG is that like Devin, their, their CEO has worked really hard to construct a motivational environment so that, okay, let's compare the two teams, right? G2 and CLG. So G2 um, drives, drives, drives all split, does super well, crushes, wins EU, okay? CLG drives really hard all split, drive, 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 wins, crushes, like, uh, and, and finishes that off, right? So then... One team was super motivated and driven and went like for training and the other team was kind of like relaxed and happy that they'd accomplished something and then like kind of like took it easy a little bit uh, or like maybe didn't push as hard as their, their fans wanted them to and then, uh, and then went to MSI. So two completely different results uh, in terms of motivation with very similar background. But if you look at what we were constructing or what Devin was constructing, what you'll see is that, uh, is that he wanted the entire environment to be self-sustaining in the long run. So that means that like your, your training environment is not static because the brain does horrible with static stuff. So like if everything is always the same routine wise, your motivation like is at subject to whims, okay, up and down and whatever you feel like the day. So um, it's really important to have like some sort of irregularity there in terms of like what, what are you doing outside of your habit, hobbies, or your, sorry, what are you doing outside of your main practice, like league? What are your hobbies? How do those cycle in and out of your life? How do you like strain hard and pull back and strain hard and pull back? How do you balance the acts of like all in this with con contrary acts of like being able to take it easy? How do you punish yourself in practice and then go light sometimes? So all of that is pretty much up to the coach. It's the coach that decides the tenor of the practice for the day whether or not he's going to be ragging on people, whether or not he's going to be like kind of lighthearted. And um, you can get a group of five people in sync only from the coaching and management role because you can get that all five people kind of like on the same period in a way. So basically, like how do you find new motivation? I get back to this question is you find a coach who understands your framework and can take you through it. Or you join a squad where you're training hard together and training light together. Um, or you like you look around in your life and you find like somebody to mentor you and say like, these are the things that are important and drive yourself to do them. Um, I mean, this is, this is the, one of the most complex questions ever, but if you're talking about in a team game and in the team environment, 
uh, then you really need to look at the coaching staff and find quality like periodization there in order to sustain motivation in the long run. If you're looking at the individual motivation, you need to investigate your life, find out the things that are holding you back and like stop doing them or stop caring about them or forgive yourself for not caring about them or accept them or just get them done and off the table so you can do other stuff. Michael asks, how should I point out my teammates' mistakes or correct them without hurting them? Should I at all? Yeah, this is the this is like the $99 question. Should you point out your teammate mistakes? And if so, how do you do it correctly without hurting them? So uh, what is your goal uh, with the team? If the goal of the team is to have fun playing with friends, then you should not point out teammate mistakes. If the goal on the team is to compete and get better, then you should point out teammate mistakes. So first I would square away the goal with everybody. I would sit down and have a team meeting. I would say, hey, is our goal here just to like hang out and have fun and socialize? Which is totally fine. Like this is what these games are for. Um, or do we enjoy the competition? Do we enjoy like getting slightly better each week? And it doesn't really matter. We're not going to go pro, but like we enjoy like feeling the progression, getting better and more in sync as a team. Um, if that's the case, then you should create a you should create a system of improvement. So what that means is you should uh, make hot seats and make it. Um, there's there's an infinite number of mistakes you can dissect after a game, and it's pointless to try to say like, okay, this. Game, I'm going to point out my teammate this mistake here, and the next game I'm not going to see it, and the next game I'm not going to comment at all, um, and the next game I'm going to be in a bad mood, I'm going to have lost, so I'm going to point out all my mistakes. So what you need to do is like divorce your emotions from the corrections and create a system. So you sit down with your team and you say, first of all, do we have an obvious team captain who can lead this discussion after every match? If the answer is no, that's fine. If the answer is yes, great, you're done for the day. If the answer is no, then what you do is you create turn taking. You say, okay, after each different scrim, a different person is going to lead the commentary. They're going to bring up the things that they think are important, and everybody else just has to accept that. You just have to accept that we don't get to talk about everything, and we're going to talk about their important things, and we're going to ignore the other stuff. And even if it's a component part of the problem, even if it's like, well, this thing led up to this thing, so we should talk about that. Stop talking about this. It doesn't even matter. You have to get over that. You have to accept that, like, okay, well, in some games that might happen, and then we get to this situation anyway. Now we want to deal with this little error, like how, and, and learning about that, not just how to implement like your change in game for how to how to correct that error, but also like figuring out how to think about that error and how to coordinate and communicate as a team like enhances you in, in other areas. So it's not about what error you're fixing, it's about how you go about fixing it that makes you a better team. So assign responsibility, divide it up, give people like a certain amount of time, like a framework, like 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Um, and then also you can create hot seats. You can do the opposite. So instead of the person picking out the mistakes is in charge. You could say this is the person who's um, who's on uh, under inspection. So in this game, Alex or Michael, you're in the hot seat. So everybody's everybody's going to get a chance to like talk about all the mistakes that you made after the game. And then next game, it's uh, Slayan's turn to to get his commentary. Okay, hopefully that helps. Dan asks a friend of mine seems unable to take breaks when on losing streaks in rank games. How can I help him help himself? Um, okay, a couple ways to do this. First, unplug his internet. That's the way that my parents taught me is the best way to stop people from playing games repeatedly. Uh, kind of sucks. Makes you really pissed. Don't recommend it. Uh, another thing you can do is like hack his account and um, log in. Kind of keep continuously logging him out of the game. So that can work. You know how to do that. Um, you can change his password. Uh, okay, but I think you're probably asking for more realistic question answers. So, how do you how do you help him from losing streaks? Um, find something else that would be more entertaining for him than trying to get the the thing that he's looking for is that win. The thing that he's looking for is the edification of himself and the win, like the ah, look right there uh, when you when you break that losing streak and you feel that value again. That's pretty hard to replace in a competitive person. It is very hard to replace. And I'm talking like losing streaks, and then you go like, I don't know, get laid or something like that. And then that intense joy from that experience still isn't enough to make you feel like you still want to go like run back and, and play more league just to get that win. Okay. So that's something that's very hard to replace. So essentially, um, Here's my advice. Number one, 
distract the person with another activity that is enjoyable. So we're talking movies, parks, ultimate frisbee, whatever, something physical would be best. Two, uh, get the mental reset. There's two ways to get the mental reset. Here's what you have to do. You have to do both of these. Number one, you have to get him in a grateful mindset. You have to talk about the things that, that he is grateful for in his life. Get him to dwell on those somehow. It can be through accident with your conversation. It can be through making a list, whatever. Okay. The second thing you have to do is uh, you have to talk about the game. You have to help process the past. Well, he wants to process the past by, or she wants to process the past by going and winning instead of having a losing streak. You can help him process the past uh, by talking about it, by going through it. Okay. So don't ignore the problem. Don't not talk about the game losses. Like help him reframe it into an enjoyable thing, into like a, like something that he that he's frustrated about or that he got to talk about or something that like now he's having fun talking about. And so like it's it's different in his memory than just like his misery in the losing streak. Okay. So um, distract him with an activity that's actually entertaining. Get him to dwell on gratefulness and get him to and, and talk about the games. Don't don't ignore them. Don't try to avoid the conversation or the topic. Okay. That's my advice. So I want to end with a question for the day. And the question is, how do you find new motivation? What do you do to kind of reset yourself and get re-motivated? Like for me, it's uh, it's a lot about taking a shower and walking. Walking a lot. Or um, resetting myself in the gym or going out to the woods for the weekend, which if you check out my Snapchat at all, you'll see that I was kind of like basically in the woods all last week. It hit 20 degrees here in Finland and boom, I was gone. We were out in the forest grilling every single day, uh, like walking on the docks. My kid fell in the lake from the dock. My my father pulled him up by his hoodie, and then he was like, it's all wet, everything's all wet. And then I took his pants off. He's like, even my underwear is wet. It was really funny. Uh, it was the first time, I think, that he fell into the lake. By the way, it was ice melt, so it wasn't like the most delightful lake to fall in, just about one degree temperature water. Um, totally, totally freezing. You could barely even put your feet in it without having a complete spaz attack. It was really cold. So, poor guy. But, uh, yeah. Something to remember, for sure. <laughs>